Hi. Now, in this video, what I'm going to be doing is looking at the mean value of a function. At the moment, you should be familiar with finding the mean value of discrete values, like this example here, 2, 3, 6, 6, and 10. Remember, we find the mean by just simply adding up our values and dividing by the total number of values, which is 5, and we end up with 27 divided by 5, which is 5.4. OK, now what I want to show you here then is what happens when we've got continuous values. If you've got continuous values, let's say we have this graph here, y equals some function of x. And we're looking at this continuous interval from a to b. That is, x is greater than or equal to a or less than or equal to b. It's given by this notation here. And we're looking to find the mean of these values or the average value, okay, between this interval. Well, the formula is this one, okay, the mean, it's given by f bar generally, is essentially the sum of the infinite number of values, the y values, in this interval between a and b. And that is given by calculus as the integral from a to b of f of x integrated with respect to x, okay? So think of that as the sum of all the y values in this interval, that infinite number. And then we're dividing it, okay, by the width of this interval, b minus a, okay? It's as if it's telling us the number of values that we've got. So it's very similar to what we did in the discrete version. Now what I want to do is take this further and work through a couple of examples and we'll also look at a geometric interpretation of what is going on in this formula. So we've already seen then that the mean given by f bar is equal to 1 all over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x integrated with respect to x. So I've used this notation f bar, but the mean of a function y equals f of x can be noted not only by f bar, but by y bar. Sometimes you'll see f avg, short for average, okay, or even f with a little m here being the initial for the mean, okay? So these are some of the alternative notations that you might see. Now I did say that I'll show you an alternative version of this, and this is the geometrical interpretation. If we had our graph y equals some function of x, okay, over this interval from a to b, then the mean, f bar, is going to be somewhere between this lowest point here and this highest point here. Let's say it's something like this, okay, f bar. What is happening is that if I was to shade this area below f bar, okay, it's a rectangle, okay, then when we're looking for this mean, we want the area below the curve, okay, to equal the area under the rectangle. And if we do that, this is what we get, okay, the area under the rectangle equals the area under the curve. And since those areas are equal, the area of the rectangle is going to be f bar, okay, that height there, times the width, b minus a. And the area under the curve is going to be given by the integral of f of x with respect to x from x going from a to b. Now if I divide both sides by b minus a, then I get this result, okay, which is what we had earlier for the mean. So you can see this is the geometrical interpretation also of what is going on. The areas below the mean in our graph is equal to the area under the curve, okay? Now, let's just do an example, all right? I've got one here. 
Find the mean value, and I've called it y bar this time, just to show you different notation, okay? Of y equals x squared plus 5 over this interval to 5, okay? It's a continuous interval. The graph must be continuous, okay? No breaks over your interval. And I've sketched the graph here, okay? And you can see it over this interval. Now, you might want to have a go at this one, okay? Just by applying this formula. If so, just give you a short while to pause the video. When you come back, you can fast forward to check your answer. Otherwise, I'm going to just take you slowly through the work solution and there'll be another example to follow later on. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So don't forget you can fast forward if you want to check your answer. But how do we do this? Well, we've got to set up our formula for y bar. It's going to be 1 over the width of the interval, which is going to be 5 take away 2. It's going to be 3 there. And we've got to integrate our function x squared plus 5 with respect to x between the limits 2 and 5. Easy integral to integrate, so if you integrate that in the normal way, you should find that you get x cubed over 3 plus 5x between those limits 2 and 5. And all we need to do, substitute our values in, 5 first, subtract what we get when we put 2 through, and times it all by that third. And you can see what we get is 18. And 18 would be somewhere across here, and that is our mean value, okay, for that continuous function. So, let's give you another one to try. Very short, easy one. Find the mean value, this time I've used f bar, of the function f of x equaling 5e to 3x over this interval, minus 1 to 3, okay? So again, give you a short while just to pause the video so you can have a go. Okay, welcome back then. If you had a go, let's see how you got on. So again, using this formula here, we're going to get this particular integral. Okay, we've got to integrate 5e to the 3x, our function here, with respect to x between minus 1 and 3. Okay, and then it's 1 divided by the width of that interval. So it's going to be 3 minus minus 1, a total of 4 units there. Okay, so... If you integrate 5e to the 3x, you're going to get 5 over 3e to the 3x, and you've got a quarter here at the front. Substitute our values in, in the usual way, and work it out, and you'll find that you get this result. Okay, I've cleaned it up from this value here, okay, by putting it over the lowest common multiple, that would be e to the power 3 there, and times top and bottom here by e to 3. So it's going to be e to 12 over e to 3, okay? And then that leads to our result here. Okay, so I hope you've been able to see your way through that. Nice, easy idea, okay? But what I'll do in the next video will be just to take this a bit further. We'll be looking at transformations, okay, of our functions and a few other things so hopefully you'll have a look at that okay so don't forget give us a like if you uh, found this video useful you can also subscribe to my youtube channel to get updates okay so thanks for watching hopefully see you in the next video